So I am so excited to be back and speaking with all of you today. We have a lovely um, hostess here joining us. And this is my daughter, the amazing warrior princess, Zena Lee. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> so we thought it would be ultra, ultra fun to do a mommy and me class. <coughs> Sorry. And we thought it would be cool to come on and do a mommy and me class where I do waist beads and she does anklets or bracelets. Now, <coughs> mm, um, we oftentimes she sees me, she's here um, while I'm working and oftentimes she wants to make a waist beat but we know how attention spans can be when it comes to kids. And sometimes I am left with all these random starter um, way speeds. <coughs> I don't know what's going on <coughs> with my throat, but excuse me, because this cannot happen. One second. <coughs> Thank you, baby. I'm just gonna eat a little um, ginger chew here. That should help. Okay. So as I was saying, um, she loves the idea and concept of making wave speeds, but oftentimes she will start and not finish and they end up being bracelets or anklets. So show your... These were almost way speeds and they end up being bracelets. And so today's class, I'm gonna teach you uh, how to make a way speed. And she alongside is going to um, make, be making a matching um, bracelet. Or, you wanna do a bracelet or anklet? Bracelet, I can't do anklet. Okay, we're gonna to get to that in a second. Okay. All right. So first things first, you wanna make sure you have all your materials. It looks we like have, the camera went um, portrait instead of landscape. So you might wanna switch it real quick. Real <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. That's weird. I don't know how I did that. Okay. Yeah, I didn't notice that either. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, seed beads. Um, we snagged some seed beads from Michael's, and she. So I have my seed beads, and then I make sure she has her own supply of seed beads. And um, out of the supplies, her supplies, we came up with this color combination today. She came up with it. Uh, we have a nice pink, transparent pink silver line here and a nice transparent silver line purple. And this is a transparent, uh, like an aqua white line. And these are some silver lined matte, frosted matte, um, transparent teal. So those are the, that's the color scheme we're picking out today. Uh, she will be adding, actually you tell them baby. I'm adding. Right here, the camera's right here. I'm adding this charm. Okay. And tell us what supplies we have here, baby. We have pliers to put the charm on. Mm -hmm. Scissors to cut the string, bead spinners to put the beads on the needle, and whatever charm we want. Which this is the charm I chose. 
right here. But yeah. Awesome. Now, are you doing a pattern or are you doing a mix today, baby? A uh, mix. A mix. Okay. So let's have my mix right there. All right. So let's go and you want to let's measure. How do we measure for the bracelet? We sweet. So hit it on your wrist like this. Okay. And make sure it's not too tight and not too loose. Okay. And then we mark it. Okay, let's with, talk, talk a little about uh, it. And then we mark it with a marker and then we cut it. We but we gotta it. double it first, right? Yep. Okay. So we add a little extra and then we double it. Like that. Okay, so then we're gonna cut. Want me to cut it for you? Okay. All right, so what do we do next after we cut it? We attach it to the needle. Okay, you want me to do it for or, you or you got it? Or you can say attach the needle to the string. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna slide one in through. We're gonna pull that needle to the middle, right? And then what, what do we do? We pull it down and then we grab a different color bead. An anchor bead? An anchor bead and we put it at the bottom. Okay. So the bees don't fall out. Okay, sounds like a plan. So we have a question. Yes. Um, so if they don't, if someone doesn't have a bead spinner, what would you recommend they do? Use your hands. You can do a hand strand or if you don't, or if you do have a bead spinner, you can use the bead spinner. If you have a bead spinner. If you don't have a bead spinner. If you don't have a bead spinner, use your hand. But if you do have a bead spinner, you can use your hand. It's optional. You can use your hand or you can use your bead spinner. I think that was a great answer. And we have one more question. Um, what size is the thread you're using? Um, I don't have a size for the thread, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but you would definitely want to get some different varieties of thread to figure out what works best for you. When I was uh, deciding on what thread to use, I wanted thread that could be doubled. Um, and with it being doubled, I wanted thread that would still go through the, the smallest size seed bead that I use, which is a Leveno. So, and then I also wanted it to be durable. And I, I also wanted it to, you know, feel good and look good also to the touch. So those are just a couple of things that I would consider when going through and trying to figure out uh, what thread is best for you. Where are you going? To the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> so she has to go to the bathroom. Um, so I'm just going to take over. Then after you, after you tie your anchor bead onto the end, so we slid on the anchor bead and we put it at the end. We want to tie a slip knot. This slip knot is just to reserve a little space for us to tie on the bracelet, anklet, or waist bead at the end. Okay, so we have our slip knot. Now, while she's in the restroom, I'm gonna do thread for a waist bead so I can go along with her. So for waist bead, you want to measure six in, I'm sorry, 12 inches. And that's six inches from each end. And then you want to measure however many inches you want your waist bead to be. So if you're making it for you yourself, you wanna put on, add on your measurements to those 12 inches. So I'm gonna add 34 inches. And then we're gonna double it. So it's 12 plus 34 times two. So we're gonna double that. And then we're gonna cut it. You wanna make sure when you're cutting your thread 
try not to hacksaw it. You know, if you find yourself having to do too much of this, then you might wanna get some sharper scissors. Okay, so it should be a nice clean cut. Always, always sharp scissors, just like when you're cutting fabric. So you're gonna get your ends here, just like with the bracelet, we are going to open up that curved needle and we're gonna put one end through. Gonna pull it. Okay. Slide that to the end of the needle. This needle is called a big eye curved beading needle. Now, going back to the question that we had earlier, if you're gonna use, if you're not gonna use a bead spinner, I recommend getting um, this same needle, but perhaps straight. They sell them without the curve. And I find when I'm doing hand strands, I find it much easier to do hand strands with uh, a straight needle as opposed to the curved needle. But you definitely want to use the big eye. And the reason why they call it a big eye is because when you open it up, it literally looks like a big eye, okay? So just to add on to that previous question, if you don't have a bead spinner, a lot of my strands, my waist bead strands um, are not made with a bead spinner. So they take a little bit more time, but the difference between using a bead spinner and not using a bead spinner is usually determined on if I'm doing a pattern or if I'm not doing a pattern with the strand. So are you back, baby? Yeah. Okay, so I put on here your anchor bead and I did your slip knot for you, okay? All right, so back to the waist bead. We're gonna put on our anchor bead and we're gonna slide that down to the end. Okay. And then we're gonna tie three or four knots around that bead. Now we wanna make sure that the bead is in the knot. We don't want the knot to be, we don't want the knot to be before the bead or after the bead. We want the knot, the bead to actually be within the knot. And it's just a basic knot. It's nothing, you know, challenging. Just how you would normally knot something. All right. So after that, we're gonna do a slip knot. Now doing a slip knot is a whole nother class. Um, I wish I could teach you how to do a slip knot, but it is definitely something that takes practice. So if you're not able to get us to do a slip knot, um, you can just skip that step. And um, I have some videos on Michael's website and YouTube that will show you how to do a slip knot. All right, so we have our slip knot for our waist bead. All right, baby. Now let's do your mix. First, so, let's talk louder, baby. First, I'm gonna pour in the first color. Okay. Yeah, all around. Okay. Now mix it up before it gets all around. We'll mix it at the end. Now, I'm gonna add the second color. Okay. And we're, and we're there. And where the blue color is not, I'm going to add the purple color. Okay. And where the purple color is not, I'm going to add the pink color. I'm going to turn the music up, so you got to talk about it. And turn like this. All right. You want to show everyone your mix? Pick up the bowl. Pick it up. The camera's right here. Mm -hmm. All right, those are the colors. Now mix them up. Mix them. Mm. 
It's okay. So we're gonna mix those up. All the colors in there, make sure all the colors show. Okay, and then what? And then we take the string and needle. Um, how do you place it in again? But, you know. Um, like this. Okay, so I okay. have a mix here too that she made for me. So we're gonna do this together. Okay, let's actually switch because this is your original mix. True, true. <laughs> All right, so we got our mixes here. Okay. All the colors, all the colors. And mm -hmm. it depends if you're right-handed or left-handed. Right. So if you're left-handed, you do it, you want you put it in your curve. left hand. You put it in your left hand. Mm -hmm. left. So let's just do for right-handed right now, because you're right-handed, right? Yeah. Okay. You know, like put the needle in like this, and then you turn it. If it's electric, turn the button on or the switch. Got it. And it will. You just send me speak louder. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our needle and we're going to place it in the bead spinner. We want the needle to be facing to the right. I'm right-handed. So if you're left-handed, do what's comfortable for you. So we're gonna stick our needle in the bead spinner and I'm using a manual bead spinner just because I like the look and feel of the manual bead spinner. Um, there are electric ones that you can plug in and there are battery operated ones. Um, it's all on your preference and what, what you like. I like to be able to control the tempo and the speed so I like to use the manual bead spinners. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle in and spin it counterclockwise because my needle is facing clockwise and the needle is facing like this. So you want the beads to go on like this. So you have to spin the bead spinner the opposite direction of the needle, okay? And if so. you wanna be a little bit fancy, you can put your finger in. Yes, if you want to be fancy. Also, when mommy does that, she's being fancy. Is that what you call it? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm adding a little bit of silver. Um, these are 80 seed beads. All these seed beads in here are 60. And I want to add a little bit of pattern texture. So I'm going to add some silver to mine. Work on yours, baby. You're not going to put the silver in there? No. I would have had it manually. You want to show them your waist, your uh, bracelet? I will show so I'll show you guys what I have so far. Oh. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that, baby. I call it the ocean spread. The ocean what? Getting yeah, ready to think of a name. Okay. <laughs> we have a question about the beading needles. Um, is yes. there a particular size people should get? Um, I'll show you what I have here. So I use, I'm not sure about a size. But I use um, Beadalon, and I believe it's three and a half inches. That's the only size um, indicator that I see on the packaging. But those are the sizes that I use. Are you done, honey?
So, Zena, do you enjoy wearing waist beads? Yeah. Yeah? Do you remember how old you were when you first got tied? Three. Three. That's right. When I first got waist beat, wore waist beat, I was three year old, three years old, and the color I had was white. White? Yep. Do you remember what your white waist bead was for? What it stood for? No. You don't remember? No. Innocence and purity. Are you done with your bracelet? So ladies and um, gentlemen, we are using, for me, when I make waist beads, I'm using the length of the needle to measure. So when the beads get to a certain length on the needle, that's when I stop and I add in any additional pattern or element that I want. And so you can choose to use the full needle length to gauge as a measurement. You can even say, okay, I'm gonna use half the needle length to gauge measurement or even the curve of the needle to gauge measurement. I don't necessarily, um, where are you going? Just for changing. No, we're teaching a class right now, honey. So, you can use the needle, instead of counting the beads, you can use the needle to determine your measurement and when you want to incorporate additional elements like a pattern by hand or a charm. Are you done, honey? No. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yes, tell us. You want to answer some questions? Also, if you have any questions for them, Zena, I can ask them for you too. Or I can read their answers and you can ask them, I mean. You have any questions for the audience? Hmm. I think you're finished with that bracelet. No, it's, I'm not. It's not mine. Do you need a longer thread? You think you need a longer thread? Oh, did you come up for a name for your color scheme, Dina? Yeah, did you come up with a name? Don't do that, you're gonna get it tangled. Not yet. Never mind, now I know a name. What's the name? The Sister Spin. The Sister Spin? Yes. Okay, what made you say that? Because these are me and my sister's favorite color. Okay. You're, you're your sister's favorite colors. So the official name of this bracelet is the Sister Spin. <laughs> we That kind of answers a question that we just got that asked, uh, do the colors you choose have significance? So when I choose my colors, um, they are in alignment with a energy color system. Um, I like to go based off the chakra color, energy, energy colors. And um, it helps me as I'm making the waist bead to be in alignment with the intentions based on the energy that that color is supposed to cultivate and attract. So yes, the colors of um, the beads and the waist beads definitely have a significant meaning to them. So I'm nearing the end of my waist bead and I want to stop six inches before the end. So I'm constantly, as I'm getting towards the end, I'm constantly measuring to see like, okay, am I six inches away from the end? And I just measured and I have from here to here before I have to stop. And that six inches is a part of that 12 inches that we initially measured for, because we're gonna have 12 inches at the, be I'm sorry, six inches at the beginning and then six inches at the end. And that just leaves room for us to be able to tie on the waist bead. All right, so 
I'm, this is six inches, so I'm complete. And we're gonna finish off the waist bead the way we started it. So we started by putting on an anchor bead and that's how we're gonna finish it. So I put on an anchor bead and I wanna cut the knee, I wanna cut the thread to move the needle out of the way. So I'm gonna move the needle out the way and then I'm gonna cut the thread. Remove the needle. I'm so happy you're here doing this with me. Okay. All right, and we're gonna tie our knots just like we did in the beginning. And if you have any more questions, if we're going to show you how to make another one, just tell us. All right. Because I would love to make another one right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just like when we started, we put on our anchor bead, we tied a knot on our anchor bead, and then we did a slip knot. So let's do, let's end our waist bead with a slip knot. And we're finished. We have another question. Yes. Um, how long on average do you think making a waist bead would take for a beginner? You know, um, I think it depends on if you're doing it 100% by hand or if you're using a bead spinner. So if you're using a bead spinner, it will take you as long as it takes you to learn how to use the bead spinner. Now, if you're using a bead, if you're mastered or you're proficient at the bead spinner and you're doing a solid color strand, so keep that in mind, the variables are you're good with the bead spinner, you're no longer struggling with how to use the bead spinner, and you're only doing um, a strand with no design or a pattern or anything, it's just a solid color strand or even a mix. If that's what you're doing, I would say it should take on average three to five minutes most from start to finish, three to five minutes. Three, prefer preferably three minutes should is the, the fastest it should take you. Um, five minutes is the longest. Now, if we're doing one by hand, 100% by hand, and we are not using the bead spinner, it can take on average 30 to 45 minutes. Also, in both instances, it does matter how long you are making the waist bead. So naturally, a 30-inch waist bead, is, no matter what, if you're using a bead spinner or doing it by hand, a 30-inch waist bead is not going to take as long as a 60-inch waist bead. So just keep that in mind. Um, I, when I first started out, I used to time myself. I used to time myself on making the same waist bead over and over and over again, just to see if I could get faster and faster and faster at making it. And that's, that's ultimately how I improve my speed. Also, um, these bead mats, these felt material bead mats, um, I, this is from Bead Alone also, um, but any type of felt type fabric is really good for hand strands. I love putting my beads in bowls but oftentimes I will create little piles of beads on my bead mat. And it really helps with um, using the needle tip to pick up the bead if I'm doing a strand that doesn't um, require me to use a bead spinner. So it looks like you're done here. Let's do your anchor bead. Okay, so she's finished with hers. And we're gonna tie, wait, don't we wanna put the charm on? Or you wanna put the charm on after? Put the charm on after, now. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna tie it on. <laughs> I hope Kalina gets to see this video. She will. Because you watch YouTube. 
a lot. Do you want to do you want to say hi to your sister? No. Say her, say hi. She might be watching. I see you watching right now. That doesn't mean that we don't need to wait until it's on YouTube yet. Okay, we'll say hi so when she watches it. Hi, Kalina. I hope you get to watch this video. <laughs> Okay, so we've tied this on her wrist. Yay. And then we're going to add a charm to it. Yep. Okay. This one, right? Here. It's fine. Uh, right here. Right here? Over All right, so I'm going to show you how to add a charm to a bracelet, waist bead, anklet, anything. The most important thing that you need when adding a charm is two pairs of jewelry pliers, okay? You need these for the jump rings. These are jump rings, put it in my hand. There are different color jump rings. These are jump rings. There are different colors. There's rose gold, silver gold. There's different sizes, different gauges, which is the thickness. Mm. Oop, that one fell. Luckily, we have more here. <laughs> okay. So we have our jump ring, and this is the opening, right? So we want to take our jewelry pliers. Oh, excuse me. We want to take our jewelry pliers and bend, twist the jump ring opening in opposite directions. So this hand is gonna twist this way and this hand is gonna twist the opposite way, okay? Just like that, that's how we open it. You don't want to open it like this, okay? You don't wanna open it up like that. You wanna twist the ends away from each other. I'm sorry, Patty, what is the question? Oh, I was just about to ask you, but I didn't want to interrupt you just yet. Okay. Um, the question is, what size color beads are associated with what ages and is there a color chart? What size beads? Um, there's no age distinction with the sizes or colors of beads. Um, when it comes to sizes and colors of beads for, let's say, young, young ladies, it's definitely based on your discretion um, and the comfort of the child. Um, some children aren't comfortable with the larger beads um, and feel more comfortable with the, the smaller beads. And um, I know definitely if you're participating in any type of gymnastics or where you have to wear a tight fitting uniform, um, definitely go with the smaller beads just because it's e it's more it's easier to conceal with the wardrobe but there's no um, appropriate no such thing as like what's more appropriate what size or color is more appropriate than the other I think all colors um, apply to various age ranges and when it comes to the size um, it's up to the person wearing it um, the size of this pad is, I want to say 12, 17 by 12, if that's just a rough estimate. Okay, so back to the jump ring. We have our jump ring. We are going to, we opened it up. We're gonna slide our gem on. And then, may I have your, your wrist, my lady? We're gonna put it on, oop, it broke, oh no! no. <laughs> it's okay, honey. You know what we can do? We can use mommy's waist bead to tie it on. Does that sound good? Okay, so blooper, 
So let's tie this on again, so this time with a little bit more leeway. Hold your wrist over, please. Stop it, like breaks again. It, it won't break again. Yeah, I think it was just so small. We didn't measure long enough for it to, um, to work. How's that? Too big? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are there any more questions at, right now? I saw one. What did you see? I saw one, but I didn't know what it said. Because I was looking at what it said. There was a question about what size is the the charm, and does does the charm have any significance in particular? A little too small. Okay, I like that. Well, I got it. So the, I don't know what size of the charm is. I'm sorry. I don't know. Um, I don't know the size of the charm at this time. And then, uh, do you have, does this charm mean anything to you, honey? I think she just chose it because it's pretty. Yeah? yeah? yeah. There are some charms that depict certain um, symbols and then the, put your wrist down. The symbol, the symbol, you just have to go based off what that symbol means. So obviously if you have, you know, a cross, you know, that's Christ and Jesus and Christianity. So certain charms do me have certain significance. Like if you have an elephant or a dolphin, so just go based off the actual charm and that should help you determine the meaning and significance of that particular charm. But seeing here today, we just have a beautiful jewel charm. Um, this doesn't really have much uh, significance to her. She just likes it because it's pretty. And that's okay too. Was there any another question I saw across? Yes, we have a question about, um, if you could go over quickly, the colors that are associated with what chakras? Yes, I recommend um, definitely looking that up. Um, only because um, that's my pers like my personal association with the color chart. Um, and then there are different explanations when it comes to the chakra system. So definitely if you Google um, chakra chart, you will have so many different examples and representations of that. We have a question once you're done with this, and maybe we can get a slightly closer shot of um, going over the technique you use for the bead spinner. Yes, we can definitely do that again. Okay, so take two of the tying. Okay, so real quick, let's add this charm. So I can show you how to properly add a charm and close it. So we're gonna add this jewelry charm here. It's much easier if you put it on before you tie it. I will say that. Okay. All right, so once you wiggle that jump ring in between two beads, you're gonna close it the same way you opened it and just in reverse. So we wanna move the ends close to each other. I don't know if you can see that. 
towards each other. There you go. Show them, baby. <laughs> there we have it. All right, so let's get a close up. You said you want to see a close up of using the bead spitter, and I can do that for you. So let me just move this down closer. Guys, sure. Excuse me, but if my friend Jocelyn from school is watching, I am not giving you this bracelet. Okay? <laughs> I already gave you my ID. <laughs> so I'm not giving you that one. Okay, Jocelyn. Okay. All right. So how do we use the bead spinner real quickly? Let me just measure some thread here so I can give you some pointers on the technique for using that. All right. So again, we are going to put our needle through, our thread through the needle, right? Oh, psych. I hate when that happens. Okay, let's make sure we got one in through this time. Yes. Right, we got it this time. Anchor bead on. All right. Not. Slip knot. I always go through this like all the way through this because this is the part that most people really want to see over and over again. Okay, so when I'm using my bead spinner, first things first, I like to make sure that I'm in a comfortable position. So I'm gonna, let's switch seats, baby. <laughs> So it's very important, especially because I am beating for hours on upon hours upon hours at a time. I wanna make sure that I am sitting comfortably. I also wanna make sure that my bead spinner is in a, a very natural, comfortable position according to how my arm rests on the table. Um, so Crystal, I'm gonna come back to that question about the slip knot, okay? All right, so what I wanna do is make sure that first of all, my body is comfortable because if my body is comfortable, everything else will flow, okay? I want, I'm right-handed, so I'm teaching from a right-handed perspective, all right? I hold the needle clockwise. So it's pointing in the direction a clock goes, all right? I put the needle in the bead spinner right here between, I wanna say, if this is 12 o'clock, this is about 11 or 10 o'clock right here, okay? And then this is like nine o'clock right here, all right? And I wanna hold the, the needle here at the end. And I wanna make sure that my hand is not strained. I'm not gripping the needle too tightly or too intensely. It's just a comfortable grasp of the end of the needle, all right? I take my other hand and I'm going to spin it counterclockwise. Because the needle is facing that way, the beads are gonna go that way and they're going to meet the tip of the needle and get onto the needle and come on to the thread. So that is the concept and theory of using the bead spinner.
And there we have it. It takes practice. It definitely takes practice for sure. It's almost like you're skimming the fat off of some soup. Like if you're making a stew or a soup and you have like the fats that are kind of floating at the top, pretend like the needle is your spoon, all right? And then you're using that spoon to skim off the fat. So we don't want the needle too deep in, this, in the, the beads because if it's too deep in the beads, then it's gonna be hard for the beads to get on. We don't want them too close to the edge or too close to the center. We kind of want it right in between the, the outer wall and the center spindle. So kind of right there is a good sweet spot. And we want to kind of tilt the needle slightly down. So not completely facing down and not completely flush. So just ever so angled down. And then that's how we do it. Now, what was that, um, that other question? Well, I think the question is asking, um, why do you do the slip knot? All right, so the reason why I do the slip knot is because I, when I'm finished making a waist bead or even a bracelet, as you saw with my daughter's bracelet, it's important that you leave enough room for when you get ready to tie it. All of the, all of the um, beaded jewelry that I make, all the waist bead strands that I make are tie on only. So I don't use any type of class or anything. So since I'm tying them on, I wanna make sure that I have room. These are my handles. These are the handles that I use to tie on the waist bead. If I don't leave, if I don't make a slip knot, all of the beads will go to the end and I won't be able to tie on the waist bead if there are beads in the way. So I like to tie a slip knot because I need to tie a knot that I can easily undo, but I also need to, need to make sure that the knot will keep the beads from going to the end this is space that I want to reserve for no beads. So that's why I tied a slip knot because it, it acts as a, a guard, a stopper to protect the space that I don't want beads to cover because I need that space in order to tie on the waist beads. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Were there any other questions? Yes. Um. I am putting the answer into the chat so other people could see it, but they're wondering what type of needle you are using. Yes, here's the needle again. It is called a curved big eye beading needle. Are there any more questions? Okay, um, let's see if anyone has any last minute questions that they want to put in the chat. <laughs> oh, someone wants to know, show how to tie the waist bead. You want to know how to tie a waist bead. It sounds like we need to come back and do that for another class. Um, but there are the first class, I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, I'm sorry. Were you gonna say something? No, I was just laughing at, at y'all oh. can't see. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, what do you wanna say? Uh, if my cousin, I think this was me this. Um, if you want me. No, no, no. No, 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 okay, no, hold on. No, if you want, no, me, no. I what, did, what did I say? What did I say? Sorry. <laughs> so, um, teaching. So, I do have videos on online on my website 
at www.turquoiseandsalt.com. If you go on my website, there is a video there that shows you how to tie on a waist bead. Um, I'm actually not dressed uh, um, appropriately to be able to tie it on you, uh, to show you how to tie it on, but there is a video there that shows you how to tie it on. If you go on turquoiseandsalt.com, also on YouTube, I have a video on YouTube, on Facebook, There's, I have several videos that will uh, show you how to tie on a waist bead. And I don't, I don't normally tie on waist beads. It's turquoise, like the color, T-U-R-Q-U-O-I-S-E and A-N-D, salt.com. And I am Mimi Lynette of Turquoise and Salt. I always forget to introduce myself in the beginning because I'm like, people know who I am, but you know, you never know. So yes, I'm Mimi Lynette of Turquoise and Salt Waste Beads. Turquoise like the color and A-N-D and salt like salt and pepper. So if you go on my website, you can find a video on how to tie on a strand. And I'm sorry if it seemed like I was just sending you somewhere because I didn't want to show you, but I am on a time schedule. So, but definitely that is where you can find how to tie on a waist bead. And I'm on YouTube and Instagram at turquoiseandsalt.com. So are there any more questions? I think that's it. We had a lot of comments saying how much they've enjoyed this class as well. Come say bye, Zena. Sorry. Bye. All right, so we have had an amazing time teaching you all how to do a an anklet and a bracelet. Honestly, it's the same concept. Everything is the same, except you're just doing a shorter length. Um, and you're tying it on your arm or you're tying it on your ankle. Um, I have several anklets on. She has a ton of bracelets on. And I recommend that you get your mini me into um, making waist beads. And the cool thing is, is that if they ever lose interest or they don't finish their waist bead, you can turn it into an anklet or a bracelet. And eventually, as their patience and their attention span grows, um, they'll make a full waist bead. She's made full waist beads before for herself and her, um, her oh. sister. Yeah. Um, but it's cool because it doesn't matter if you want to make a bracelet or anklet or a waist bead. It's the same concept. And it's a wonderful thing to do with your mini me um, and teaching them the concepts and the significance of wearing waist beads is also very uh, this is a great uh, um, opportunity or activity to reinforce um, those teachings. <coughs> so I'm going to leave you. She's in the back dancing. I don't know if you can see her. This is her favorite song. But it's been so wonderful uh, meeting with you all today. I hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, Mimi Lynette of Turquoise and Salt on um, Instagram at Turquoise and Salt or online on uh, my, my website, turquoiseandsalt.com. All these materials that you see here today were available, is available at Michael's. The seed beads, <coughs> the needles, the bead spinners, the jump rings, the charms, um, scissors, everything, the mats you can find at your local Michaels or online. So definitely please check them out. And it's been a pleasure meeting with you and happy Mother's Day. Bye y'all.